If working apart, we are a force powerful enough to destabilize our planet, surely working together, we are powerful enough to save it. Hello, my name is Kyle Murter. I'm a public speaking author, coach, and champion. And today, you and I are going to be analyzing Sir David Attenborough's COP26 presentation. Why? Well, firstly, it's a great presentation, so why would we not? And secondly, I feel there's a lot of skills that Sir David shows that you and I can learn from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight certain areas of his presentation, and I'm going to point out things that he does very well, which we can incorporate into our own presentations. And I'm also going to highlight some areas where he could potentially improve, because no matter how good you think a speech is, it can always be improved. Now, I should say, I'm not going to show the whole presentation in today's video. So if you want to see the whole speech, you can get that in a link, which I will leave in the description below. With all of that said, I think it's time to get stuck in. Let's take a look at his opening 30 seconds. As you spend the next two weeks debating, negotiating, persuading, and compromising, as you surely must, it's easy to forget that ultimately the emergency climate comes down to a single number. The concentration of carbon in our atmosphere. The measure that greatly determines global temperature. Interestingly enough, I feel the opening of Sir David's presentation is one of the areas he could improve the most. Let's start off with the content, the words he uses. He opens by saying, As you spend the next two weeks debating, negotiating, persuading, and compromising, as you surely must. Now, although this opening is, is conversational, it's relaxed, I don't think it's the most striking. And you have to remember, when we're delivering any presentation, no matter who we are, we have to earn our audience's attention. It will not be given to us. We have to earn it. So I feel a more striking opening would have been effective here. For example, Sir David could have opened by saying, there is one number that will determine the fate of humanity. And that cuts to the chase, cuts to the theme of his speech straight away, this key number, the, the carbon rate in our atmosphere, it's the most important theme throughout the entire speech. So we get to the conflict quicker and it generates a little bit of curiosity. What is this one number? Why is it so important for humanity? All of these questions begin to come up with that change in opening. The other area which I feel could have been improved, and this is for the whole presentation, of course, is the lectern which Sir David is using. I've got a problem with lecterns for a few reasons. Number one, a lectern creates a barrier between the speaker and their audience. Number two, when people have a lectern, they tend to look at their notes on the lectern, breaking eye contact with their audience. And then number three, well, it's this. No matter who you are, everyone seems to grab onto the lectern. And as you can see, Sir David even shakes his lectern a little bit there. And it's interesting, if you look at some of Sir David's past presentations, past documentaries, he gestures a lot. He is very strong with his gestures, but I feel that lectern almost contained him, stopped him from expressing himself even more. So the point here is, if you're delivering a presentation and you have a choice of whether you stand in behind the lectern or whether you stand in front of the stage with no lectern, choose no lectern. You will be far more compelling and you won't be shaking it as well. And the changes in that one number is the clearest way to chart our own story, for it defines our relationship with our world. For much of humanity's ancient history, that number bounced wildly between 180 and 300. And so too did global temperatures. It was a brutal and unpredictable world. At times, our ancestors 
existed only in tiny numbers. But just over 10,000 years ago, that number suddenly stabilized. And with it, Earth's climate. We found ourselves in an unusually benign period with predictable seasons and reliable weather. So now we're moving on to the part where Sir David educates us on the importance of this key number. And it's a very important part because if we don't get it, then we're not going to get the entire presentation. And there's two things that Sir David does incredibly well here to explain a complex topic. Number one, his team or him have uh, created that graph, that simple, easy to follow graph, which shows the tracking of that number. It's not overly complex, a simple visual, which helps us see that that number has fluctuated a lot over time. The other thing that Sir David does incredibly well here is he uses specific words to describe the two extremes. So when talking about how the graph was very volatile going up and down, he uses words like brutal. He also uses the word unpredictable, okay? Gives us a sense that this is not a good thing when the graph is going up and down. And then when the graph stabilizes and is more consistent, he uses words such as predictable, benign, the opposite of brutal and unpredictable. So those simple choices in words create a clear picture in our mind that this is bad and this is good. Global temperature has not wavered over this period by more than plus or minus one degree Celsius until now. One burning of fossil, our burning of fossil fuels, our destruction of nature, our approach to industry construction and learning are releasing carbon into the atmosphere at an unprecedented pace and scale. We are already in trouble. The stability we all depend on is breaking. So now we're getting to the problem, climate change. And what I like here is that Sir David is continuing the theme of that number. As that number rises, our problems increase as well. So he's creating the connection there, which is very strong. I also like that he explains why this is occurring. Uh, burning fossil fuels, releasing carbon into the atmosphere is rising this number up. But what is even more important, and this is something that you should do anytime you're talking about a problem in your presentation, is Sir David shows the consequences of that problem. He shows the consequences. In other words, he shows what harm will occur if we do nothing. He shows well, visuals of the icebergs, for example. He shows the idea of our society, our, our our way of being, our stability is breaking. And something he also does, which I've not included in the footage today, is he actually shows people who are suffering because of climate change. So those strong visuals strengthen his point of why that number rising is so detrimental. Is this how our story is due to end? A tale of the smartest species doomed by that auto human characteristic of failing to see the bigger picture in pursuit of short-term goals. Perhaps the fact that the people most affected by climate change are no longer some imagined future generation, but young people alive today, perhaps that will give us the impetus we need. So I have a couple of suggestions for this part of the presentation. I like the words that Sir David is using. I think it's flowing very nicely. But at that point, this point here where he's talking about how we're failing to see the bigger picture, a tree falls behind him in the background. Now, he's saying some really cool and interesting stuff, which we all need to take on board. But I'm looking at that tree. And the point here is you have to make sure that your visuals are not distracting from your message. That tree falling over was far more engaging for me than what Sir David was saying, yet the value was in his words. So make sure that your visuals do not distract from your message. 
My second point for improvement is to do with the phrase young people. So David makes the point that there is a generation today that will be affected by these changes in our atmosphere. Maybe that will give us the impetus to change. I think this could have been strengthened if Sir David went a little bit more personal. Instead of just for saying young people will be affected, say the young people of today, the children in your neighborhood, the children in your family, perhaps your sons and daughters. How will they be affected? I think that would have made it so much more personal, would have pulled on the heartstrings a little bit more, and ultimately would have made the audience care on a more personal level as well. We are, after all, the greatest problem solvers to have ever existed on Earth. We now understand this problem. We know how to stop the number rising and put it in reverse. We must have carbon emissions halt them this decade. We must recapture billions of tons of carbon from the air. We must fix our sights on keeping one and a half degrees within reach. We're now moving on to the solution part of the presentation. We've been told about the problem, now we're being told what we can do to fix it. And I've got one recommendation and one commendation for this little part. My recommendation, when Sir David's talking about how we are the, the greatest, the smartest species on earth, I would like to have seen a big, encompassing gesture to take in the whole room there instead it was quite small which didn't really match what he was going for in terms of the the dialogue we want to make sure that our gestures match up with our words okay but my wreck my accommodation my thing that he did very well was the repetition of we must we must turn things around here we must collect carbon from our atmosphere we must keep our one degree in temperature. The repetition of we must was very powerful. And what you'll tend to see is when people become emotional, when they become more impassioned, they tend to be more rhythmic with their words. So if you have a part in your presentation where you want to convey a bit more passion, use a, a, tri a triad like that, a we must, a we must, a we must. Start your sentence three times in the same way. It has a powerful impact. We will all share in the benefits, affordable clean energy, healthy air, and enough food to sustain us all. So a key principle in convincing people to take action is to either talk about loss or gain. And Sir David does both. He talks about the loss as in if our temperature keeps going up, our climate is breaking, our way of life will change in a detrimental fashion. But he also talks about, now that we're talking about the solution, the benefits. He says, if we make these changes, if we turn things around here, we're gonna have fresh air, we're gonna have an abundance of food, we're going to have a healthier earth, a healthier earth and an ultimately a healthier human race as a result. So he's talking us through the benefits. He's encouraging us. He's showing us what we will gain if we take the action he is suggesting. So whenever you're trying to convince people, try to think of those two things. Convince them through showing them the loss, but also the gain as well. The people alive now are the generation to come. We'll look at this conference and consider one thing. Did that number stop rising and start to drop as a result of commitments made here? There's every reason to believe that the answer can be yes. If working apart, we are a force powerful enough to destabilize our planet, surely working together, we are powerful enough to save it. Couple of things I love about this part. Number one, he links us back to the theme, that key number. We can bring down this number. That is ultimately what our goal should be. So he brings the focus back to that. The second thing which I love about what this Sir David did was he used a juxtaposition. If we can tear apart our hour working apart, imagine what we can do working together. That was a beautiful phrase 
beautiful phrase which really made us think. It was a profound message, a profound point there that if we work in collaboration, we can do right for the earth. Inspiring words there. And that's the sort of language play that you should be looking to incorporate in your presentation to make people stop and think. In my lifetime, I've witnessed a terrible decline in yours. You could and should witness a wonderful recovery. That desperate hope, ladies and gentlemen, delicate excellency, is why the world is looking to you and why you are here. Thank you. Endings are always very important. What is said last, lasts with the audience. And I think this was a strong ending. It rounded it up well. Sir David left us in a positive, inspired place going forward. A couple of things I do think could have been improved though. Starting off with just some delivery stuff. I did feel that Sir David was looking a lot to his left, the left side of the stage. There was a lot of attention being played over there. Now, I understand most of the audience was probably over there, but there was this side of the room as well. So it would have been good if the eye contact had been more spread out. The other thing was when Sir David was talking about why those delegates were in the room, he was pointing. Now, what you have to remember is that we've got countries from all around the world at this conference and pointing in some cultures can be seen as a little bit disrespectful. OK, can be seen in not a very positive light. So I think it would have been a little bit more effective and also would have been a little bit more safe if Sir David had just had a nice big open palm gesture like this, inviting the audience to take part in this mission going forward. The last thing I would say, I like the ending. That is why you are here. But I think it could be strengthened even a little bit further by referring back to the key theme. For example, Sir David could do the same things again, uh, say, say the same things again. This one desperate hope is why you are here, because you have the power to change this number. And leave them on that, because the number is the key piece of information. The number has been the key theme throughout. So leave them with that knowledge, leave them with that strong, clear call to action that it is up to you to change this number. I think that would have given the ending just a little bit more power and, and really made the call to action abundantly clear as well. So that's my evaluation of Sir David's presentation. It was a very incredible, inspiring presentation. He had visuals that backed him up incredibly well. He had great turns of phrase and he had a message which the world needed to hear. Comment below with your thoughts. Did you see anything which I did not? Do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me? I'm always open to having a little bit of a debate. They're good fun. So please leave a comment below for that. And if you would like your presentations evaluated like Sir David's has been today, then I am more than happy to discuss some one-to-one -one training with you. Simply email kyle at confidencebydesign.co.uk and we'll see if one-to-one -one training is right for you. I hope you enjoyed today's evaluation, and I wish you the very best for your next presentation.